Good morning, everyone. I am uh, Bishop Lake Diane Bailey, and we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful teaching on today. We are talking about going into your secret place. Uh, what is interesting about this particular topic is because of the fact that so many times when we hear about going into your secret place or having a prayer closet, we we associate that with taking a particular part of our home and turning it into a prayer closet. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. If that's the way the Lord gave it to you, that's, that is fine. It's nothing wrong with having a prayer closet. Prayer closets are great to have. Um, but going into your secret place, is there's a purpose as to why God need us to go into uh, our secret place and i want to explain what that secret place is and the importance of why god need us to go into our secret place this teaching is our faith friday on going into your secret place praying to god uh, as i said earlier there is a purpose as to why god tells us to go into our secret place so this is going to be a wonderful teaching and just stay tuned Our opening verse is coming from Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Uh, we want to give honor where honor is due to our Heavenly Father. We want to we want to love on our Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we also want to acknowledge and thank the, the residency of the Holy Spirit constantly living within us. So today we have a wonderful opportunity to study matthew chapter 6 verse 6 which is a very familiar scripture you hear people uh quoting this scripture a lot it says but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So right here, this is the very verse that people use to uh, believe that you are to have a prayer closet. And again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the prayer closet. It is not anything wrong with having a prayer closet. Uh, if God told you to do a prayer closet, then you do a prayer closet. If God told you to use that type of mean to to get a sincere prayer up to him then that's what you do but this particular verse is not actually talking about a physical prayer closet i know people have used this to indicate that it's talking about a physical room but this is not actually talking about a physical room this is talking about a your prayer closet is internally within you god is trying to get us to understand that he needs us to go into that secret place where we're able to communicate spirit to spirit and those of us that go into that secret place god shall reward us openly and we're going to go a little bit more into details on that So let's look at a description of the secret place. Your secret place is private. It's just a place between you and God. As we as we learn to enter the secret place, shut the door and commune with him, our souls will be changed. We will grow deeper in our intimacy and God experience joy, a larger impact and fruitfulness and receive a deeper calm. So it's a more private place when you are using spirit to spirit. Now, you know man is made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Now, notice I started with spirit. Spirit is the place that is willing to do what is righteous. That is, there's two natures that we deal, deal with. <coughs> we deal with our spirit nature, which desires all day long to do right. And we deal with our sin nature, 
which is our flesh, which desire all day long to not do right. And the controlling factor of that is our, our soul, which is where our thoughts and our attributes and our personalities uh, lie. So as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you keep thinking on letting the sin nature side win over the spirit nature, then that's where you get people who comes off as totally evil or always doing things that is not pleasing to God. So going into your private place is using that very pure, righteous part of you, which is your spirit man, to talk with God. I know people say, well, no, he want us to make our petition known by speaking it out in the atmosphere. So let's look at that. The number two is it is protection. Because just as God hear us pray, so does the enemy through his demons. This is God's way of protecting us when we go into our secret place. Why? Because sometimes you can be in, in, a, in a, a place such as a church, for example. Well, there's someone in there who may have an issue with you or who may not just downright like you. So while you're sitting there praying and making your petition known, then someone else could be praying against you. That's why he tells us don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Because, because God needs us to be in that protective bubble. Going back to... Uh, Daniel, when Daniel prayed, it took 21 days for his prayer to be answered because the angels had to fight in the heaven, in the sky. They had to fight with the demons, and that held up his answer. So, so when you are praying your spirit man to, to God's spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, then you you are actually entering into a protective place where your petition can be made known. Now, it's not saying that you can't pray out loud. There's nothing wrong with praying out loud. We have uh, certain prayers like corporate prayer or intercessory prayer, you know, where, where you are praying for a group. And those prayers should be prayed out loud because you are praying for a group. But there is a time when God needs just that simple intimacy with you. Number three, it's a petition. This builds our trust and relationship with God. Notice that he rewards us openly. He needs our prayer free of distraction and discouragement to petition him properly. So this here is just the build up to put, to petition him properly. So remember, the first three of praying in your secret place is it's private. It's just you and God. All you're focusing on is the intimacy between you and your father. Number two is protection. So that others won't hear what you are praying to God about. So that, 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 that prayer can't be hindered or contradicted or critiqued for that battle. And we're going to go into that in just a moment. Number three is petitioning. You're petitioning God. And, and this, is, this is a time where you are in a needed place and you need God to hear. And this is not a time that you need others to hear. You need God to hear. Number four is pure. When we are free to petition God, our prayer are more sincere and pure. Those are the type of prayers God or God is seeking. A more petition, a more pure prayer. Because a lot of times, if we are praying out loud, we can get distracted, we can get discouraged, we can, uh, we can get into so many different negative aspects 
But when you are praying spirit to spirit, then it's just you and God. Now, I know you're saying, but how in the world do you pray your spirit to God's spirit, to God's spirit which is the Holy Spirit? The way to pray your spirit to God's spirit is, is like a nonverbal communication. You you go you can go into one of the ways you can do it is go into a meditation state where you you are in a, a calm place and you are only focusing on petitioning God about a situation. And when you are when because God looks at you internally. He looks at you from the inside. He can actually hear what you're saying internally. So that that makes him more uh, sincere and pure. Number five, we are praying in our secret place from the depth of our spirit, which is where God hears us and rewards us openly. So in that meditation state, when you are in a calm place and you you are just your thoughts and everything is is focused on that particular petition that you need God to hear believe it or not God can hear without you even verbally saying anything i tell the story all the time about when uh, the enemy attacked me one night and was like was on top of me and was forcing my my face into the pillow because i kept on calling on jesus verbally and and um the more i called on jesus the more he pushed my face into the pillow where i could not barely i could barely breathe number one and number two it got to a point where i was so far down in my pillow where all I could do was just mumble. And even in that mumbling, the enemy had to get up off of me. God came to the rescue. So if if God can hear your mumbles, don't you think God can hear your internal prayer? Number six. True. When we are not being watched or critiqued, our prayers are true, and because it is true, we will get true results. You know, one of the problems that we as mankind have is when we're praying, uh, we we have the right intent a lot of times, but we get caught up in saying all of the right words and making it sound good and making it uh, uh appear like like it's uh taking you to a higher level because we know we're going to be critiqued by those listening in and so a lot of times that take the trueness out of our prayer so when you're praying in your secret place number six it keeps it true okay now I'm not going to go into the fullness of this scripture right here, but it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So those of us that dwell in the secret place. So in other words, using another meaning. One of the things that I do, uh, if, if, if I feel the need to pray out loud, because sometimes we may feel the need to pray out loud. So if I feel the need to pray out loud, one of the things that I do before I even begin to pray out loud is I cover that prayer. At least I'm getting in the habit of doing that. I cover that prayer in the blood of Jesus so that the enemy can hear it, see it, distract it, discourage it, uh, or cause any type of hindrance to it. Because I want to stay in that secret place when I'm going before God. And I don't need any distractions from the enemy or those working for the enemy or those connected with the enemy. So another way, and I, I told you that you speak internally. That was the first one I was telling you about, about speaking internally. And then I was telling you that 
as you're speaking internally one of the ways that you can speak internally your spirit to god's spirit is by meditating by going into a meditative meditation state where you are centered and focused solely on that prayer going forth to god and you're not distracted or discouraged in any way and then the second way that i'm telling you about uh dwelling in that secret place is by covering your prayer not just that one you're doing internally but even the one that you're speaking out because when you cover that prayer when you cover that prayer that closes off the ears of those listening in that co- that closes off the attack of the enemy when you cover it in the blood of jesus you can't just say i cover this prayer you got to cover it in the blood of jesus and then one of the ways that i do it i say i cover it in the blood of jesus from the beginning to the end and all points in between i cover it so there is no distraction hindrance discouragement going on by the enemy and those connected to the enemy I cover this in Jesus' name. Amen. So you have to have authority to be able to do that. But that is something that you can do. Okay, let's and then it says, uh, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. So your praying in your secret place builds your trust in God because you get to such an intimate state with God till you begin to find yourself transitioning from a a doubtful person or a double-minded person to being a more uh, faith-type person. Because again, this is Faith Friday. So you'll find yourself being more of a faith type okay then it goes says surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence so when god can hear your prayer now god got all power in his head he got all power in heaven and in earth right he's all powerful okay so and he's he's omnipresent so it means he's everywhere He sees everything, omniscient, right? So because he's all-powerful, he sees everything, he's everywhere. When you do that sincere prayer, the Holy Spirit make intercession on your behalf to God to make sure that God has full understanding of what that prayer is being, what you're really trying to say. Because sometimes our emotions can get in the way and, and... we can start going all over the place but the holy spirit brings us back to that calm place and intercedes to god what we'll really see what they're really trying to say god is this right here and i'm just speaking in today's terminology and that's how the holy spirit talks with god see god what he's really trying to say or what she's really trying to say is that she's in need of this 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 Right now, she's just a little emotional, but this is what she's really trying to say. And so God hears it from the intercession of the Holy Spirit, and and that moves God. So he will deliver you out of those uh, uh, that that discouraged place, that depressed state, that that, um, hindering state. He will will deliver you out of that state. Okay, uh, verse 4. He shall cover thee with feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That goes back to what we were just talking about, as uh, you praying in your secret place brings you to a place of trust, and it brings you to hearing the true uh, blessings or, or seeing the true blessings of God. But he's got to first put you in a protected, that's why I was telling you about, your praying in a secret place puts you in a place of protection. This here is showing you he puts you in a place. He covered thee with his feathers. So he, he covered you to protect you. That's why I was saying some prayers that we need to do out loud, we need to cover those prayers. 
for the purpose of making sure that the enemy can't hear it. Thou shalt not be afraid, verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flieth by days. So don't be afraid of your enemies and, and your so-called enemies and those that want to be your enemies. You don't have to be afraid of them, those that walk in darkness. You don't have to be afraid of those that walk in the day. So let me explain what the difference of those are. Those those that walk in darkness is those whose intent is, is not of righteousness. That's the walk in darkness. Those are the ones that, that walk in unlearned. They don't walk in righteousness. The walk in the day are those who supposed to have the word of god in them supposed to have the spirit of god in them but they're doing little sneaky underhand things so you don't have to be worried about them either verse six nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that uh wasted at noonday again that's that's talking about those two types of people Number seven, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Now, this is Psalms 91, which is a prayer of protection, right? So, when you are in that protective state, yeah, you, you see the stuff around you happening. You know, you have you ever wonder why uh, you, you supposed to be at a particular place? At a particular time and something happened maybe to your vehicle or whatever and you so you end up being late getting to that place but thank goodness you did because there was a bad accident out there that you probably would have been involved in had you went at the time that you was planning on going i, I woke up today and went out there car would not start wouldn't hit a lick wouldn't, wouldn't even turn over wouldn't do nothing But the, I know that even though that's bad, I know that there's a reason for it. Now, sometimes sometimes that reason is not a good reason. Sometimes it's, it's, it's a good reason. Sometimes God protects you by keeping you out of a certain place. Now, I got a way to go out there and get that car started and get back on the road which I'm going to do after I get through with this training. But just wanted to help you to understand how God puts you in a protective place when your prayer changes to more of righteousness. Verse 8, Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Only with your spiritual eyes. This is not your uh, fleshly eyes. That you'll be able to see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. But in other words, God is living in you. You're in the image of God. You're in the presence of God. You're in the protect the protective state of God. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come not thy dweller that's being that's being in god's protection you see these things happening around you but they don't touch you they don't bother you work in salas matthew 6 3 and 4 work in salas it says but when thou doest um let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thy arms may be in secret, and thy father, which is, which seeth in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. So, in other words, people may not hear what you're praying. People may not see what you're praying. People may not experience what you're praying. But what you're praying from the sincerity of your heart will be reward openly why reason being is going back to what i said at the beginning 
you're dealing with three part man and you're dealing with two nature the spirit nature and the sin nature so your spirit nature is always desiring to do what is right including in your prayer but your fleshly nature can get distracted can get discouraged can can uh, have a bad intent so he needs you to work in silence also if people don't know what you're doing uh they just they don't know they can't pray against it and i know you're saying well if you believe then ain't nothing they can do they can distract you they can discourage you they can hinder you it's a lot they can do they can't stop your blessing they can't stop god from answering your prayer when you pray in faith but just like daniel they can hold it up so if you if you don't mind your prayer being held up go ahead don't work in silence don't work in silence alpha alpha god has blessed me to obtain two degrees uh, my bachelor and my master god has blessed me to obtain my bachelor's and my master's nobody knew i was in school nobody knew what i was doing all they know is when they saw the the, the degrees being posted on my facebook page i moved in silence because that's something that god has told me move in silence in this season because there are people out there that are literally setting out to destroy you it's really sad when you take all of that energy to plot and plan on how to hurt somebody when you can take that same energy and love them so if you want your prayers answered if you want uh i don't want to say immediate results because it may not be be for you to get immediate results but if you want god to hear your prayer more immediate move in silence the faithful spirit proverbs 11 13 a tale bearer revealeth secrets but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the battle so in other words if you praying for everybody here and you praying to be seen and heard yeah you you're just like old tail bearer tail bearer is one that can't keep your mouth closed got got to tell everything and every to everyone but if you are praying just for god to hear because there's something that you need god to answer on then you conceal it this is confirmation right here sometimes when we're praying for some for others you you need to conceal it you don't need to pray it out loud that's why when i see on facebook people saying uh unspoken prayer just pray for me please and i'll simply say pray it and believe it and trust in god i may say something along that line and then i go into my secret place and i begin to pray for them So you don't always have to know what you're praying about for a person. If you're praying for somebody, you don't always have to know what you're praying about. Believe me, God knows. You don't always have to know. That's another secret place is when you are interceding on the behalf of someone else and you don't know what you're praying about. But God knows what that person is in need of. And God is going to use the Holy Spirit to lead you on how to pray for that person for that reason. And that's another reason why you need to go into your secret place. So remember, your secret place is you praying your spirit to God's spirit. That's one. Another part of your secret place is you covering your prayer. If you if you need to pray it out loud which in the case of like you praying for someone you may want to pray that prayer out loud just saying for example and you want to cover that prayer before you start 
because you're interceding on the behalf of someone. You, another Number three, going into a med- meditation state where you're at a calm place and you are solely focused on praying because you know God looks at you internally, not externally. But there are some times where you do need to pray out loud, which is like such as an accessory prayer, a warfare prayer, um, corporate prayer. Sometimes when you're praying for a group, you may need to pray out loud. But even in that case, you need to go, uh, you need to cover that prayer so that when you are praying out loud, that that person is in a protection of God while you're praying for them. To protect them from getting attacked. Five practical uh, steps in your prayer, in your prayer life. Pray non verbally. That means that your spirit is talking to God's spirit. Be sincere in your prayer. Have the right intent when you're praying. Praying to. Uh, get what you need heard by God heard and it's sincere or praying to intercede on for the behalf of others. Not every time you pray got to be about you. Sometimes you need to pray for others. Number three, have faith or trust. Number four, you got you got to trust God. You got to have faith in God when you're praying because he tells us in his word, as you pray, believe. And you should have that that you are praying for. But you got to believe. You got to have faith and trust. Or trust. Now another word for trust is faith. Another word for faith is trust. Number four. Move in silence. Stop got to make it known to everybody. I'm praying and interceding and talking in my prayer language. Which that's another way of praying in your secret place is praying in the spirit where even you don't know what you're praying for but god does so if you don't know then the enemy don't know those around you don't know but god knows so that's another way of praying in your secret place and number five cover yourself Cover yourself in the blood of Jesus from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Put a hedge of protection around you, protecting you from discouragement, distraction, hindrance, uh, naysayers, tail bearers, protecting you from any wiles of the, of the world, any wiles of the enemy. And you cover this in the blood of Jesus. Always put that seal on it. You're doing it in the name of Jesus. Don't just say that prayer and then that's it. Always seal it. Now, I know you say, well, this seems like a lot. It's really not a lot when you get used to doing it often. It's really not. But it's a protecting thing because you got to protect yourself. Now, as we get to our closing here, I hope that this this has really blessed you. I hope this has helped you uh, to get a clear understanding about going into your secret place. Now, again, I'm not saying that you can't have a prayer closet. You can have a prayer closet. Nothing wrong with having a prayer closet. But this is a protective way of getting you covered and protected from the wiles of the world. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. Uh, I hope this has helped you. I pray that you let others hear this so that they can have a full understanding of it as, as well. But if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to us. We would love to help you on this spiritual journey. That is what we are supposed to do. Iron is supposed to sharpen iron. God bless you.
Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing. Lord, we know how the enemy tries to attack us, God, but we know that every time the enemy tries to come against us by using himself, by using others around him that he has placed his spirit into, God, we know that you raise up a standard against them, God, and that nothing they shall do will be able to hurt you, hurt us because we have that protection around us. We have that hedge of protection around us. Even when you need us to go through some things so that we can learn a lesson, God, you still have a protection around us because, God, even when we're going through some trials and tribulations, you have already gone ahead and prepared us a way of escape. So when it seems like we are getting too far into that dark place, you have already prepared us a way of escape. So God, I'm just praying that through what has been said today has helped people learn how to go into a, to their secret place. That that God, as they're going into their secret place, or, or even if they're praying out loud, God, that they cover it in the blood of Jesus. I cover this prayer, God, in the blood of Jesus from the beginning to the end and all points in between. I cover it from any distraction or discouragement. Lord, I come against any attack of the enemy trying to hinder this prayer from going forth. I come against any attack of the enemy trying to hinder this message from going forth. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over this message from the beginning to the end and all points in between. I plead the blood of Jesus over this prayer that everything will fall right into godly uh, path and that you will do what you have said you will do. I thank you, God, for this opportunity for Faith Friday. And God, I pray that it makes a difference. I pray that it makes a difference because it's not about me, but it's all about you. I thank you in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. If you would like to reach out to us, you can contact us at changelifeoutreachministries at gmail.com. That's changelifeoutreachministries at gmail.com. You can uh, email us if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, if you would like to become a member, you can also reach out to us at changelifeoutreachministries at gmail.com. If you're looking for salvation, you can reach out to us at changelifeoutreachministries at gmail.com. The way to separate it is in the subject box. You can put salvation or rededication or membership or question or prayer and even if you don't put what the prayer is for you can just put that in the in the subject box and we once we get it we will of course start answering accordingly so again that email address is change life outreach ministries at gmail.com be sure to go to our YouTube channel, which is Change Life Virtual. Change Life Virtual. Be sure to go to our YouTube channel, like this message, share this message with others, and be sure to subscribe and leave a message so that we'll know how we're doing. Because if we're messing up in any way, please let us know. But be respectful of it. And we again, go to our YouTube channel, which is Change Life Virtual. Like, share and subscribe god bless you and may he keep you in his perfect will